Hey guys, Zuzu Natural here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. I sound a little congested. I'm just getting over something, so just disregard the sound of my voice. It sounds a little funny. It's even funny for me to hear it. But um, I wanted to come on and do a video for you guys. And so the video that we're going to do today is something that I have been getting asked a lot in the comments and in person. So I love crystals. You guys know that I sell crystals. I have a monthly subscription crystal box. And my number one question that people ask me is, what do I do with them? <laughs> Especially like if I'm vending, people are attracted to them because they're so pretty. They're beautiful. They feel the energy, even though they may not be conscious of it, but they want to know, what do I do with it? So I purchased a crystal. What do I do with it now? Or I want to buy it, but what do I do with it? Somebody gave it to me. I don't know what to do with it. So that's what this video is about. What to do with your crystals. I'm going to give you five very easy, very simple ways that you can use your crystals right now. Okay. You don't have to go out and buy any special equipment. You don't have to do any special ceremonies. You can use your crystals right now. So if that's what you're interested in, stay tuned. The first very simple, easy way you can use your crystals is as jewelry right? What better way to use your crystals than to wear them? They also look pretty and stylish, but you're getting the actual benefits from the crystals. So to wear them is jewelry. As you can see, I have turquoise here. It's my turquoise ring. I pretty much have this one every single day. I got this ring for my birthday, maybe about, mm, it's had to be about mm, over 10 years ago now maybe 12 years ago now. And I have worn it pretty much every day since that day. Very rarely do I not have this on. Also, I have here a malachite bracelet. And so this is a piece of malachite inlaid in silver. And I think this is like Moroccan silver. So I have malachite on. And I have this bracelet on a lot. Not all the time, but a lot. Also, I have on today a wire wrap piece of citrine. So if you have a tumbled stone, you can just go ahead and wire wrap it or get it wire wrapped, put it on a piece of cord, doesn't even have to be fancy, but you could put it on a chain and now you can wear your crystal. So that's my first way of using your crystals. So in ancient cultures, and we'll take it back to ancient Kemet, which would be what the ancient Egyptians called themselves, one of the names that they called themselves was Kemet. And um, they looked at jewelry in a very different way than we look at jewelry now. So now jewelry, what does that even mean? I think that most Jews are the ones that are responsible for creating jewelry and behind jewelry. So we kind of get that name from that. But what does that mean? In ancient Kemet, it was called Sa. Sa. Sa means spiritual protection. And so that gives you a better insight into what they were using this adornment for. It wasn't just because it looked pretty. So I wear this. It's not just because it looks pretty, right? We have an unk that symbolizes something. We have turquoise that means and symbolizes something. We have malachite. I've got silver. Silver metabolizes the body. So it's not just because it's pretty, although it is, and I like it because I like adornment. I'm kind of gaudy and I like a lot of adornment. And that doesn't mean that everything I wear is because of Sa, but in general, most of the time, that's what I want. So if you look at ancient Egyptian cultures and you even look at the remnants that have been left behind, if you look at their statues and their sculptures, you look at um, burials, you see lots of lapis lazuli, you see lots of turquoise, you see lots of carnelian. There were crystals that they used over and over and over again. And they use these for a reason, not just because they look good, not just because they were pretty. So you have lapis lazuli, right? Truth, awareness, inner wisdom, insight. It's associated with the throat chakra, so it helps you with your voice, speaking your truths. Then it's also associated with the brow chakra or the third eye chakra, which is intuition, connecting with your higher self, your inner wisdoms, right? Higher consciousness. And so they used lapis 
for those reasons, not because it was pretty. Uh, turquoise. A lot of ancient cultures used turquoise, and you can find turquoise used throughout the world, particularly in ancient cultures. So you find it in Africa, you find it in Asia, you find it in the Americas, right? North, Central, and South America. You find turquoise being used, even though turquoise is not necessarily found in all of the places that you would find it in in ancient times, as far as the things that they unearth, as far as sculptures, as far as burials, it's not necessarily found in those areas. So they were bringing it in for a reason. Uh, you have jade. The Mayan used to carve their teeth down and inlay their teeth with jade. They did that for a reason. Now, a lot of people say is, oh, it was a sign of beauty. And that may be, it might have been a sign of beauty. We won't dispute that, but there was a reason behind it being a sign of beauty. So jade is good luck and fortune, well-being. It's number two is put your crystals in a little pouch, and put them in your pocket, put them in your purse, put them in your book bag, put them wherever you are going, whatever you're going to carry with you for that day and take crystals that mean something for you for that day, for that energy that you're trying to bring forth for that particular day. So I'll take my crystals very often and I just have two little pouches here. I have little pouches of crystals everywhere. Okay, so for example, this little pouch right here is, let's see, let's see. This little pouch right here is my wealth attracted, attraction and abundance pouch. It has pyrite, so it has a little piece of pyrite in there. It has a piece of citrine and it has a piece of adventuring and then I top it off with a piece of jet jet is an organic crystal so it is not a true crystal like these jet is made from um, trees and so wood so it's like um, kind of fossilized wood so it's much lighter than a crystal a lot of people are like that's not a crystal it's so light no it's not a crystal but we call it a crystal but it's jet it's powerful i love it it's amazing and i like to couple it with things particularly this set so i'll take this set i'll pop it in a pouch and i'll stick this in my left pocket your left side is the feminine side it is also the side that is symbolized and associated with receiving so i'll pop this in my left pocket and i will go particularly if i'm vending and that is my reminder and that is the energy that is going to help me tap into the abundance and the wealth and the sales some of these i think adventuring but most of those these are associated not the jet but the citrine, the adventuring, and the pirate are associated with merchant stones. So if you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, or you sell things, it's a merchant crystal set. So that's another way that you can use your crystals, having them personally on you. I know people who stuff crystals in their bras. I do it sometimes, uh, but I don't do it a lot of times. But very often what I'll tell people is they'll say, you know, I have crystals, but they don't do anything. And I'm like, where are your crystals? Oh, they're at home. Okay, they're at home. You're here. What would you expect your crystal at home to be doing for you right now? That's what I want to know. Nothing. It's not doing anything for you. So Carry your crystals on you in a little pouch. They don't have to be in a pouch. It's just an easy way I like to group crystals together. You don't even have to have a grouping. You can have one crystal. So I've got this little uh, Labradorite heart right here. And Labradorite is one of my favorite crystals for moon work. So we have a new moon coming up. By the time this video comes out, it might have passed already. But we have a new moon and full moons coming up. So I like to work with Labradorite on those particular days. So I might take Labradorite and pop it in my pocket just to tap into that moon energy. Also, I have this. This might be a little big, but you have a heart. I love heart-shaped crystals. It is just some of my favorites. So that's selenite, that's rose quartz. And you pop this in your pocket, you might need to feel a little extra compassion, a little extra love for self and others today. Pop that in your pocket. As a matter of fact, I have this set that I just popped a bunch of crystals in my pot in this pouch and put them in here and this particular day I was needing to feel more compassionate I was feeling some kind of way and I was like I've got to tap into more compassion and love and so I have my rose cords I've got some pink opal I've got an amazonite all of these crystals are associated with the heart chakra 
and rose quartz and so and then I just threw a clear quartz in which was just to amplify all of that energy it's not associated with the heart chakra but I needed that one day I really did and so even if you don't believe in crystals right and, that, and that's your right you don't have to but sometimes these are just a wonderful reminder right so you you look and you have these crystals that are associated with love and compassion. And it reminds you that that is something that you need to be doing today and every day, but particularly this day that I just went overboard with all of these crystals and popped them in my purse. The third way is to use them in your home decor. So obviously crystals are pretty, right? So they're going to add a certain sort of, sort of pizzazz, a little something, something to any area and they're going to look good, but that's not the only reason we would be using them that's just a bonus that they're pretty and they look good so some of your larger pieces like if you have a piece like this this is a snow quartz which is just a clear quartz but it's known as either snow quartz or milky quartz because it has little air bubbles within the quartz and it's not clear so it's a clear quartz but it's just a milkier clear quartz so this type of piece you would just leave stationary somewhere so we know clear quartz amplifies energy right and so this would be used with alone or with any other crystals just the bigger pieces I find for this because you're not going to carry this in your pocket right you're not going to put this in your purse look at this beauty this huge rose quartz, all that love energy just radiating. Oh my goodness. You would put this stationary in a room that you would want to just have that love energy. Bedroom might be really nice for a piece like this. Although it could go anywhere because you could always use compassion. You could always use love, self, love, love for others, love for the world. You could always use that. And so use the crystals in your home decor. And you can have certain crystals for certain energies that you want to bring forth in a room. For example, we have selenite here. That's a selenite heart. I've got a little piece of black tourmaline. And this is a wonderful combination. I'll add a quartz crystal with this, whether it's a clear quartz or a rose quartz or amethyst, any of the quartz with this. And we have uh, energy clearing and cleansing and purifying along with protection and then black tourmaline is also for wonderful for protection and so I like to have these in rooms because your home is your sanctuary right that is your peaceful place it is your temple outside of your body temple right so you want to make sure you have the energy right and so you have crystals that are you trying to bring forth you might have an office and you might want to have crystals for concentration right you might want to have crystals in your bedroom for sleep right lapidolite is one of my favorite you can even pop those under the pillow you can have them under the bed near the bed and they can create a tranquil atmosphere for sleep so depending on what room it is you might want to put different crystals in those rooms so that's an easy way that you can use smaller crystals but particularly your larger crystals that you're not going to be toting around in your pocket my fourth way is to meditate with your crystal now there are various ways that you can meditate with your crystals i'm going to give you what in my opinion is the simplest and the easiest way and that is to simply take the crystal and hold the crystal during meditation. You don't have to have any fancy rituals. You don't have to follow any special instructions. You just hold the crystal. The crystal knows what it's supposed to be doing, even if you don't, right? So there might be a particular crystal that you love. Go ahead. Sometimes we're just, we gravitate towards particular crystals for a reason. Actually, all the time, I believe we gravitate towards a particular crystal for a reason. So if you're going to go meditate and something says, hey, grab that selenite, go ahead, grab that selenite. Hold it in your hand to your meditation. This could be a 60 second meditation. This could be a 30, set, 30 minute meditation. It could be an hour meditation. There are no rules and regulations on your meditations, right? That's up to you. Just like there are really no rules and regulations when it comes to crystals, it's up to you. These are simply guidelines. So don't let anyone tell you that this is the right way to do it and this is the wrong way to do it because that's just not the case. It's just not the case. So I love selenite for my meditations selenite like i said before is great for uh, clearing blockages so it helps to get the energy flowing throughout the body and throughout the space it's cleansing uh, it's a protective crystal so that's great for meditation depending on what type of meditation you are doing it also taps into the angelic realm so if you're trying to get in tune with um, spirit guides 
or um, your higher self. Uh, what else? Guardian angels. It's This is a wonderful crystal for that. So I love to just take my selenite. And I do so much with my selenite. I think selenite might be one of my all-time favorite crystals because it is so multi-purpose. Oh my goodness. And it goes well with so many other crystals. I love to carry it just on my person when I'm out and about. I love to have it under my pillow when I'm asleep. I love to meditate with it. I love it. So that's the way that you can use your crystals is during meditation. Simply take your crystal or crystals. You might have two. Hold them in your hand. Do your meditation. Keep it moving. Very simple. Very easy. Once you get a little more advanced with that, you'll be able to pick the you'll be able to pick the particular crystals that will work well for whatever meditation it is that you're doing. Like for example, if I'm doing a new moon meditation, like I'll be doing tonight and tomorrow, uh, new moon is on the 31st, which is tomorrow, I believe. I'll be doing a lot of work uh, <laughs> with my Labradorite just because it's a crystal that works really well with the moon energy. And so I'll do that. Selenite is also a great crystal that works well with the moon energy and selenite translates to moonstone or moon crystal or crystal of the moon stone of the moon not to be confused with the actual moonstone but um it is called selenite which uh is named after the greek goddess selene which is the moon goddess so meditate with your crystals the fifth way you can use your crystals kind of goes with one of the others that I spoke about, but it is sleep with your crystals, okay? Literally pop those crystals underneath your pillow, okay? It is a game changer for sleep. It's a game changer. I'm telling you, once you do it, you will be so hooked. So when I first started sleeping with crystals under my pillow, I just really wanted to know how it made me feel as opposed to looking up as to what it was supposed to make me feel. Because sometimes what you'll find is what it's supposed to make you feel may not be actually what it makes you feel. That is up to you to determine. And so um, in my sacred sleep set, which was one of my cosmic crystal boxes, it was for the April box. There's an unboxing on my channel. I'll link it below. Uh, but I had six crystals associated with sleep. Now, those six crystals did different things. They aren't all, I mean, you could just pop them all under the pillow. You could, I wouldn't recommend it because they're for different things. So for example, Lepidolite, which is one of my favorites and I, I don't have it, have it. I just don't have it near me. So I'm not going to jump up and get it. But Lepidolite is one of my favorites and you'll see it in that video. That is one of my favorites for a peaceful, tranquil sleep. So Lepidolite has lithium in it. And so, you know, lithium is one of the uh, drugs that they give, one of the ingredients and in drugs that they give to people who have depression and anxiety because lithium helps calm you, right? So that is a naturally calming stone. So I love to sleep with a pit of light under my pillow, um, but I, you name it, I've tried it. So with amethyst, I've told you guys in the past, people love amethyst to sleep with under their pillow. And they talk about these wonderful, peaceful, tranquil dreams that they have. And that is not the case with me with amethyst. I've never had a peaceful, tranquil dream with amethyst, but amethyst is also wonderful for astral traveling, uh, for lucid dreaming. And so I find it good for that. But what's going to happen is there's going to be no peace and tranquility happening if I use that. And I already know that in advance and that's okay. So play around with crystals. Selenite is one of the crystals that I love to put under my pillow by itself and with other crystals. And you pretty much can't go wrong with selenite, but figure that out for yourself. Go ahead with whatever crystals you have and put them under your pillow and just see what kind of sleep you get. Kind of play around with it. See what kind of dreams you have. Uh, selenite is wonderful for dream recollection. And so if you want to be able to remember your dreams and kind of get what you need to get from your dreams, selenite is a wonderful one. You put that under the pillow, pillow when you wake up in the morning, you just kind of lay there and reflect. And selenite helps you with that dream recollection. And of course, you should have a dream journal. Write it down if you're trying to remember your dreams, because we always think we're going to remember our dreams and we don't, we don't remember them. We'll be like, wait, what happened? I think, oh, wait, you just don't remember. So those are the five very easy ways that you can use crystals right now. I'll add a bonus six 
Pop them in the bathtub. Don't pop selenite in the bathtub, though. Don't do that. So there are a lot of crystals that should not be wet, should not go in water, and selenite is one of them. But pop your crystals in the tub. Rose quartz is one of my favorite crystals for putting in the bath with me, also amethyst. So I love having spiritual baths. I'm a water sign. Water is very very spiritual for me, uh, so to speak. And so when I'm taking a bath, I prefer a bath as opposed to a shower, but we know we're not going to be taking a bath every day, twice a day. Like that's not going to happen. But when I do, I try to make it into an experience. So I go ahead and I add my salts for detoxification and healing and pulling out those toxins. Also relaxing. I go ahead and I pop crystals in the tub, rose quartz. That's a nice love stone compassion, right? I'll put these right in the water and um, just let them really get into the water. I program my water and I program my crystals when I'm having a bath to give me that experience that I want. So let's just say I want to say, you know, this is going to be a wonderful night. I'm full of love. I'm full of compassion and joy and cheer and laughter. Then, you know, I'll just put that into the energy of the water because water just like crystals, has a crystal instruction and holds that message, that intention, that energy. And so I'll do that and I'll just pop these into the water. I'll just make sure you don't pop one that's going to dissolve or rust. So you don't want to pop pyrite in the water, that's going to rust. You don't want to pop selenite in the water, it'll begin to dissolve. It might not disappear on you, but it'll certainly lose its luster and sheen and uh, kind of look dull and it could begin to deteriorate and dissolve. So just pay attention to the ones that you're putting in the water, but that's a great way. There are loads of other ways that you can use your crystals, but I just wanted to give you a very simple, very easy, this is what you can do right now, today. So I hope that helped. I really do. Like comment, share, subscribe. If you have any questions on anything that I just mentioned, drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. I want to do a Q&A, a crystal Q&A. So if you have questions for that, drop that in the comments as well. And I'll get to a, a crystal Q&A just in case you've asked me something in the past and I haven't been able to answer it, get to it, or maybe you needed me to expand upon it. I can do that. So drop that in the comments, right? Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good jazz. Zuzu Natural. Peace out.